Uh, now, it's often claimed that Test Cricket's oldest record, its most enduring one at any rate, belongs to Charles Bannerman, famous for his 165 retired hurt in the inaugural Test, which famously comprises more than 67% of the very first Test innings. But in fact, that's yeah. not the case, is it? James Southerton, uh, when he stepped out onto the pitch the day before the conclusion of Bannerman's innings, was at, let me see, 49 years and 119 days old, Test Cricket's oldest debutant. He remains Test Cricket's oldest debutant. Although, I should say, he too lied about his age on the Alhambra Manifest, claiming to be 46. It's appropriate that he holds this record, of course, because, as your book shows, yeah. he was a very late bloomer. I think he does remain the oldest male debutant. I think the record may have been broken in the ladies' game now. But, you know, he, he holds that record. He holds the record of the first Test cricketer to die as well. So in terms of, yeah, his development of his bowling ability, it did came, come very, very late. He started out as a batsman and had a reasonable reputation, that, but that's how he was first chosen in county cricket. And when he bowled in his early years, he was a medium fast bowler. So he developed after the regulations were changed to allow bowling um, from a greater height. He developed a new, a new style, um, right hand off spin, which previously wouldn't have been allowed. He was very old when he came back and, uh, and started with that new bowling and he had great success. It I kind mean, of stands talks. to reason, doesn't it? Anyone who's tried to bowl off spin will find that, that a high action is pretty much a requisite, isn't it? Spin bowling, in effect, was something that was new. So he had a, a number of hugely successful seasons when players were trying to get used to this, this new style of bowling. By reputation, he wasn't quite as accurate as Alf Webb, but he put a lot of spin on the ball and he... He changed his style or his speed an awful lot. It just seems he was a thinking bowler. He was always thinking about how to get someone out. Bold with his head, his as the Victorians like to say. Yeah, he just had huge success for a whole for a number of years through the 1860s, taking a couple of hundred wickets, um, well, more than 100 uh, wickets every season. And I think he was the first bowler to take 200 in a season. He was in his 40s, basically, at this time, but hugely successful with this new style.